Grade 8 math number 8.1c. Systems of linear equations, we're going to solve graphically. A system of equations are equations that have the same variables, and if an ordered pair solves all the equations simultaneously, it's a solution for that system of equations. Since the graph of an equation represents all ordered pairs that are solutions of the equation, if a point lies on the graph of two equations, that point is a solution of both equations and is a solution of the system. And a system is a set of things working together. If one doesn't work, the system doesn't work. So if we graph an equation, and it turns out to be this blue line, and we graph another equation, which turns out to be this pink line, where they intersect, where they cross, well, that's the solution of the system of equations as an xy ordered pair. See? Now, keep in mind that these are all in slope-intercept form, but we can graph things that are not in that form. We're just doing that right now because we're just getting into this in Chapter 8, okay? So, we've got this as our pink line and this as our blue line, okay? So, the first thing we do is start by graphing each equation, and we find the point of intersection of the two lines. So, remember what we did before? We started with the y-intercept, and in this one, it's a positive 4. So that's on the y-axis, a positive 4. So let's find that. So here's the y-axis, and here's our positive 4. Can you see that? It'd be right there. All right? Now, it says negative x. Well, do you remember from 6th grade math? In video 6.2b, if you haven't seen it, you really should. We talked about our friend, the invisible 1. There's actually an invisible 1 in front of that x. It's negative 1x. Whenever you see a variable by itself, there's actually a 1 in front of it. We don't need to say there's 1x. We don't need to put that 1 there. We can see there's 1y and 1x, right? So just remember that it's there, okay? So our slope is a negative 1 over 1. So that's a negative slope. That means our line is going to fall to the right, doesn't it? So we know our line is going to go in this direction, but it's only going to go down by 1 because our slope is a negative 1. So it's going to go in this direction, and it's just going to go down 1 to this point right here. Rise is 1, negative 1, and run is 1. See? So we went down to the next corner of that same square. See that? Right there? So when we draw a line through these two points right here, we get this pink line. All right? So now let's do the blue one. Wow, that's in slope-intercept form. It's missing part of it, right? Oh, but do you remember we talked about what happens when there's no y-intercept b? We just put plus 0, because that's basically what it is, right? So we can put plus 0 there as our y-intercept. That means that our point is going to hit the y-axis on the origin, 0, right here. That's where it's going to hit the y, right there. Okay, so if it's ever missing, just put in a plus zero so that you'll be in y-intercept form, and that'll help your brain think, okay, now I know what to do because it looks like a familiar equation, okay? So now we know our slope is three, so that's really a three over one, right? The rise over the run, because three over one is the same thing as three. So now we know we need, we have a positive slope, so we know it's going to rise to the right, so we know our line is going to go this way, and we know it's going to go up 3 and over 1 for our rise and our run. So we're at 0, so we go 1, 2, 3, and our run is a 1. So we go over 1, and look, it's on that point, that circled one, that the pink one went through. So we draw our blue line between, you know, from this point to this point and continues on. And now we've got an ordered pair, don't we? See what the ordered pair is? X is 1 and y is a 3. That's our ordered pair, a 1, 3. So it turns out to be 1, 3. We check by substitution. All that means is plugging it into the equation to see if it is a solution to both equations. So anytime you see substitution, it means take those numbers and plug it in, okay? You substitute it for the variables, okay? So let's do the first one. So remember, we've got that negative 1, okay? So if our ordered pair is a 1, 3, can you see that? A 1, 3, x is 1, and 3 is the y. Well, y is the first one, so that's 3, and we've got a negative 1 times 1. Well, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. 
I'm going to add the 4. Negative 1 plus 4 is 3. Look, 3 equals 3. So yeah, it's a solution for that one. Now let's try it for this one. We don't need to write that plus 0. We just needed that for when we were graphing. We can just plug it in as 1 and 3. 1 and 3. 3 equals 3 times 1. Yep, it sure does. So yes, 1 comma 3, x1 and y3 is a solution to the system. That ordered pair is a solution to the system of equations. See that? All right, now let's take a look at these. I'm going to throw another curveball at you. Here's our equations. We've got y equals 3x minus 3, and our second equation is y equals 3 and then x minus 1 in parentheses. Well, we need to do distributive property, don't we? We need to do that right away before we do anything. What does that give us for our blue line? It gives us y equals 3x minus 3, doesn't it? Look at that. It's the same as that one, y equals 3x minus 3, y equals 3x minus 3. You know what happens when we go to graph it? It's got the same y-intercept, negative 3, and it's got the same slope, 3, which is a 3 over a 1, right? Our rise over our run. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3 up for our rise and over 1. So we've got this point and this point, and we draw our pink line through it, we get that, and we draw our blue line through it, we get that. It's the exact same line. You see that? And it's a positive 3, so it's a positive slope. It's rising to the right. See that? Well, we identified any ordered pairs that could have been solutions for both equations, or tried to, and we didn't get any because the graphs of the equations make the exact same line. Every ordered pair that is a solution of the first equation is going to be the solution for the second one. This system has infinitely many solutions. We could put a tiny microscopic dot anywhere along here, and it would be a solution for both because they're on the same line. See? We could pick any point on that line. All right? So now we've solved them graphically, and we're going to continue on talking about linear equations and systems of equations. Now we're going to solve some word problems, okay? Maybe that'll be helpful. All right, so I'll see you in 8.1D, and we'll try some word problems with systems of equations, okay? I'll see you next video. Don't forget, I'm on Patreon.com, and I don't have any ads in my videos, and I don't ever want them to be on here because I want you to think math straight through without seeing some silly commercial. And if you'd like to support me, even if it's just for a dollar a month, it'll be greatly appreciated. I have to buy lots of dry erase markers. I occasionally have to replace this board, and they're not cheap. And I have some shelter dogs I'm trying to take care of. I'll see you next video. Bye.